Hey comrades, welcome back to the fourth video in the Code 2 Crash Course. Today, we're going to cover the British along with their plentiful emplacements including the Mortar Pit, the Bofors, the 17 Pounder, and uh, the Forward Assembly. This time we end up playing two games and in the first one we cover more of the emplacements, what you need to know about that. And in the second game we get more into the vehicle play with the Centaur, Sherman Firefly, and the AEC. I think you're going to like it. There's lots to learn. Enjoy. All right, comrades, today we're going to be going over the British faction. You'll notice on these newer factions, uh, the commander choices are a little bit less. Less overwhelming than the Soviets and Wehrmacht because we have less to choose from. But the British have some really unique and, in my opinion, overwhelming abilities. you notice, like, for instance, we have um, air supply operation, automatically drop medical and weapon supply crates. Um, we have a resupply half track on this commander. The Crocodiles, by the way, excellent tanks. They have a flamethrower and a main cannon tank. So these commanders could be worth it um, just to get that Crocodile. They have a lot of armor as well. This is going to be my uh, runner-up for commanders, Vanguard, so take note of this one. The Forward Logistics Glider is a plane that drops into the battlefield and it'll have a, cr a squad part of it, but you can actually reinforce from that plane um, on the battlefield. Could be probably a little bit uh, daunting to, to use as a new player. Vehicle crew repairs is very clutch because it'll drop smoke on your vehicles and automatically repair them. So if you see that on a commander, you're definitely going to put that to use because then you can keep your engineers doing other things. Or you might not even need engineers in the late game. And this one does have a crocodile. Strafing support is very good as well. Have some air cover. But the three that I was going to recommend to new players was Mobile Assault. This one allows your engineers to get flames. Commandos are excellent close quarters troops and they can plant demo charges if you remember that from the first Soviet video um, It has a land mattress, which is just a very wide scattering Artillery barrage and it also has the vehicle crew repairs Royal artillery I think is the best all around for a new player especially Because we get these flares that give us vision we can drop a concentration um, Arty barrage from the base. It has a Valentine light tank as a sexton artillery um, and that perimeter overwatch. The Royal Engineer, also very good. It has the vehicle crew um, and it has a flame incendiary drop, which is clutch for making support weapons move. So we'll just see what map we get and we'll probably, um, you know, we'll keep our options open. I did say I was going to go to 1v1s, but I think I'm going to retract that. A lot of people were in agreement that that might be too boring. And I just honestly don't have a lot of experience in 1v1, so I think it might be unwise to do a tutorial in a 1v1 situation. So I'm going to go ahead and queue 2v2, 3v3, we'll just see what we get. Um, by the way, you can mute maps that you don't like over here on the right, and I'm just taking advantage of that real quick. Now before I wait to get in the game to explain this, um, yesterday when we did the USF, I told you how mobile they were. They had a mobile ambulance, their major could set up a retreat point anywhere in the battlefield. And even the tech ups were squads that you could utilize on the battlefield. Now the Brits are kind of the opposite. They have a lot of static emplacements. You don't necessarily have to use them though. So you have the option to take advantage of them or you could just keep all of your stuff into tanks and infantry and mobile units. But save for the forward observation post, which is one of the key ways of offering uh, medics and health to your troops. That is a static building that the engineers can build. You can actually build it in your base if you want. You don't have to actually put it forward on the battlefield. Um, we'll definitely do one of those in the game to show you because it's pretty important. But the uh, infantry sections, the core infantry of the British Army, also have the option to upgrade to health kits. And they can heal any troops around them. So you can actually heal on the go. Okay, we got a 2v2. This should be fun. So some of the British emplacements are the Bofors, which is an anti-air, also very good at anti-infantry. It's great at um, denying areas of the map early in the game because you can get it pretty early. The one downside is you have to decide if you want to tech to an armored car, which is like their light tank, or you have to tech to the Bofors, so you have to choose one or the other. You have to decide mobility or static, or you don't have to tech either. You can save your fuel and wait to invest it in the late game. Um, another emplacement is the mortar pit, which is, um, it's essentially light, it, it functions similar to just a mortar, but there's two of them in a pit and they're static, they cannot move. 
if you put an engineer in the mortar pit, they fire even faster. So it can really wreak havoc um, on enemy support weapons or their static units with the downside of it being vulnerable to um, counter artillery. And another, the last British emplacement is the 17 pounder, which is amazing against tanks, but it's also static and it's a little bit slow at firing and moving. So like we mentioned in yesterday's uh, video, having about three infantry to your build is gonna be um, a wise play, it keeps you flexible, keeps you mobile on the field. The British also get this Vickers heavy machine gun off the bat. And that's a pretty decent machine gun. It's definitely worth getting. Infantry squad trained and ready to go. I don't think it's an instant build like it is with the Wehrmacht and the MG42. But as a new player, I think you will benefit from having machine gun. If you place it well enough, it can afford you some good early game map control because it'll force units to retreat. Because the enemy won't have a lot of ways to counter a machine gun early. But I'm just going to go ahead and build three infantry sections first so I can get some capping done. And then I will go ahead and get a machine gun. An infantry section of Sergio says the British AT guns are the best. And yeah, I, I think I would agree with that. The British AT guns have... And by the way, guys, I don't have the numbers memorized, but just based on experience, it seems like their armor penetration into tanks is more consistent. Whereas the USF AT gun is probably one of the worst in terms of armor penetration. And this is just based on experience. Um, when not using the armor piercing rounds, especially. I'm gonna go ahead and get that MG that I said. And we're just making sure we cap this fuel. We want to get our fuel production going. I'm gonna probe up here, get some cover for my troops. Now the first tech for the British are the platoon command posts. You do have to tech in order with the Brits, and that'll unlock us the Royal Engineers, the Sniper, um, the six pounder anti-tank gun and the mortar emplacement the emplacements do have to be built by engineers though so Machine gun crew awaiting orders. you're gonna have to have an engineer on the field first step for my mg i'm just gonna try to protect our fuel just create a back line over there all right we're probing up we found some grenadiers on their munitions this is worth fighting for now i'm gonna go ahead well now, this is, a, this is an interesting decision with the Brits. And again, guys, Brits are not a faction I play a lot. So, um, you know, take my advice with grains of salt. But this is a point where you're going to decide, do you want to invest in your infantry sections? If you look behind the chat, you can see, you know, we have the ability to unlock a Mills Bomb grenade. We can research the weapon racks. And we can also Im uh, improve our infantry sections to five-man squads. Now, as you've probably noticed so far... The amount of models that you have in a squad is is totally dependent on how much firepower they have and their survivability. I'm gonna move up my machine gun, try to get a more aggressive front line here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and go platoon command post just for the sake of showing you the tech. But it is a very strong play in my opinion to tech up the five squad and to start putting the Brens on these infantry sections because they start getting very hard to deal with. The new platoon command post is ready. The platoon command post, quick upgrade. You notice like the tech of all the different factions takes varying amounts of time. Oh, there's a machine gun pointed the other way. We're gonna want to go ahead and get a flank on that. Try to pester him a little bit. He's gonna set up. Oh, another important thing to note about the British infantry. I'm gonna retreat him. He's getting flanked. Did you see this? Um, the sword on that shield there. The British get an attack uh, bonus by being in cover, which is exclusive to them. Um, and it makes them very deadly when you're able to stay in cover and take long, long range fights. So now that we have Enemy platoon command control. posts, you'll see take one of our points. the infantry sections have the ability to be upgraded with pyrotechnic supplies. Now this is an interesting upgrade. It allows you to throw a smoke grenade which will use the British base artillery to hammer that point. Oh, they just hit me with an amazing grenade there. That was a rifle grenade. 
I looked away for a second. Those rifle grenades are sneaky. So I'm gonna go ahead and tech up to meds right now because I... Actually, no. Cancel that. I'm gonna show you what a forward headquarters does for the health. And again, guys, with me floating the resource, you'll notice. Constant problem. I'm gonna go ahead and build a engineer so that I can build a forward headquarters. Teammate lost his scout card to this raquette, and that's the OKWAT gun. We haven't covered that yet. It's the OKW Kubel wagon. Let's get our troops reinforced. The new engineer section is waiting for orders. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and build a forward assembly. This is a way to heal your medics along with that medic upgrade on infantry sections, but we don't need both. You can have both if you want. And you can build this forward assembly in any of your own territory. Meaning the blue sections that you have control over. <clears throat> Notice I'm in red cover there. That was... Red cover is horrible. That was not good microwing on my part. And we're about six minutes into the game. You want to keep an eye on the clock. So that you can uh, remember to build AT. I think I'm going to go ahead and build one. Just so I have it, because odds are I might forget if I don't build it now. As we said in previous videos, we want to have AT at least by the 7 to 8 minute mark. Especially since they have their fuel, we haven't been contesting it, so it's pretty standard that that's when they would be afforded. You notice as I've given my MG more sight, now it's shooting at max range. It's suppressing that squad that it wasn't hitting before. Now this is something you want to take note of. You can throw grenades over fences even if you can't see the enemy. So he could go there and if my teammate wasn't there, he would be in black fog of war. He could throw a grenade over that fence. And so your troops are definitely at risk for that. You want to be careful around sight blockers. Oh, see, he's firing a grenade. You'll notice when the... You'll notice when the model squats down, he's about to fire a rifle grenade. So if you're watching... You can see when that's coming. Okay, back to our forward assembly. I'm gonna click the medical uh, stations. You notice one of the other option is a forward retreat point. So if it's out there, if it's out there advanced on the battlefield, um, you'll be able to upgrade it to a place where your troops retreat so they don't have to go all the way back to base. Now we have no defense on this left side and I have a lot of munitions. So I'm gonna go plant a mine in case they try to Dive a vehicle back there to go exploring. And I'm going to get this machine gun out of here just because they retreated. I want to get him healed up. I'm going to bring my AT gun to the middle. See, the medics are now enabled on this forward assembly. Here's what I'm going to actually do over here just to try to give some defense. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to click here and then I'm going to click over here. One thing we haven't talked about yet is vehicles move faster on the road. And the natural pathing of a vehicle is going to want to use these roads, which is why it's a great idea to plant mines on them. All vehicles move faster on the roads, as far as I know. Here's, here's something that's not very wise. I have an AT gun up advanced with no supporting cover. You want to be mindful of probably not doing that. But I do have my infantry coming up. You notice the roads is where you also have red cover, so your troops are more vulnerable standing in a road. I think it'd also be good to get my machine gun over here just to protect this fuel, make sure we keep it. I could slowly advance it if they don't if they don't move forward. So I do have a lot of munitions. I have 260. This is where I, I can decide: do I want pyrotechnics or do I want Brens? I think I'm going to go ahead and get some Brens because they're so powerful. A capture point is being overrun. They're definitely going to come in handy. Okay, we got two mines there. I'm going to go ahead and put some barbed wire on the screen cover. And this is something we also haven't covered, guys. Putting barbed wire behind a wall like that will prevent your opponent from using that as green cover for their troops. If you have a, if you have a spare engineer, that can be a beneficial thing to do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tech the Bofors. The armored car is a great choice. Gives you lots of mobility and it's a strong unit. 
But we've covered a lot of vehicle stuff already, so I'm gonna go ahead and tech to the Bofors and show you guys what that is like, because it's unique to the British. Panzergrenz, very good close quarters units, just shredding my troops. I should focus fire on him. Try to get him out of there. We have a downed MG42. Best machine gun in the game. That would be a good thing for us to go take. It's beneficial for us to have it because it's cheaper to reinforce and it's a better machine gun and it denies the enemy from getting it back. I'm gonna go set up that MG there. You know what, since I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and just set up another mine. That might catch him off guard. Now one thing I should have done was built this a little closer to my base because the medics are not healing automatically. I built it just a little too far out of range. Definitely keep that in mind. Alright, Bofors is available. Let's go ahead and build it. This will be a very annoying placement for them. You'll see the red ring as I was building it. It has range all the way to here. If it has sight. Um, emplacements can be destroyed while they're being built. So you want to protect them. It's also possible for them to survive. They can survive fire, it's just when they finish they'll have a, a less health to deal with. And if you do lose it while it's building, you are going to lose that resource that it costs. So you want to protect them. If it's under intense fire, you can cancel it by pressing X or cancel construction. Which could be the better choice than losing all of your resource. Oh, I forgot. Okay, we got we got Brens. I need to start upgrading with my Brens. You can get them off these forward assemblies, which is another benefit to having them more advanced in the field. Or you can also grab them from your base building here. And the infantry sections do have two weapon slots, so I could grab two. I'm not going to. I'm going to try to save some munitions for the later game. Bofors is up. But they are going to have a hard time taking this point. You can also attack ground, so say I didn't have vision over here. I can press G, and I can fire into the ground. Which is silly because I'm giving away the idea that I have a Bofor, but... For the sake of demonstration. I'm going to bring up my AT gun. Now, odds are, they're going to start hammering the Spofers with indirect artillery, like mortars, rocket trucks, things of that nature. So you're going to need to be prepared for that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take up to our Tier 4, which gives us access to the Centaur, the Cromwell, the Sherman Firefly, and the 17-pounder. I'm going to put a brand on this infantry section. And I'm also going to tech up to five-man squads on the infantry section, just to give them some more durability. Alright, you can see we're putting a lot of pressure on their front line here. Go ahead and move up and help our teammate out. He's got guards. Guards rifles. Elite Soviet troops. Oh, that's a good grenade. I gotta get out of there. This is a pretty fair fight. You can see, I think the infantry sections would win this, especially with this Bren. Panzer Fuselers are better long range units, and they can snipe models that are below a certain health threshold. T70 obviously is going to help us win that engagement. I think we'll also go ahead and build a mortar pit for the sake of demonstration. Costs 350 manpower, 8 population cap. That's another thing to note. These emplacements do cost population cap. We'll put them a little bit farther back to keep them safe. Uh, having the Bofors in front is a good way of supporting it, keeping it protected. The downside is it does- oh. Maybe don't want to put two these two things too close together because that just makes it an easy target for our, the enemy rockets and artillery. So I'll move it, let's see. Maybe we'll put it, put it over here. All right, I'm gonna take him back to base and heal him up. I don't know why the medics aren't healing this. Oh, you know what? It's because we have five infantry now. So, yep, that's why it looked like I was low health. Because we have a fifth slot now. I'm gonna move up my machine gun. Something we talked about previously was once you earn some ground in a fight, you want to make the enemy fight for it. You don't want to keep your line back if you don't have to. So I'm just gonna move up this machine gun, and make him. You know, earn this back. Make them force me off that point. 
We're starting to blob up some infantry. That was a good hit by the 270. And you notice he's reversing. He's staying out of range of the Faust, or he was trying to. They ended up getting it off. But you, if you stay max range, you can avoid getting Fausted as long as you are on top of your micro game. All right, we got a mortar up. You see, we can hold fire. It won't do any shots. You can do a simple four round barrage. And you can also do a smoke barrage. And the smoke barrage has a little, much longer range. Very, very long. The enemy are attacking an emplacement. Now they're being introduced to the Bofors. Suppressing those enemies. Oh, and I should have retreated this sooner. We got a grenade. Thankfully, it's just a flame grenade. Those do more damage over time, but not necessarily on its first explosion. Okay. Now, we have an exposed flank over here. I'm going to plant a mine. One thing your emplacements are susceptible to are tanks diving in or trying to snipe it with the long range, so... You know, it's a good idea to get some mines in the, in the flanks. So in case they do try any of those vehicle dives, you can... Break their engines and finish them off. Alright, let's take a look at the British tanks. We have a Centaur, which is the anti-air and, and uh, effective against infantry. Such high high velocity rounds. Um, we have the Cromwell, which is like the medium tank, comparable to like the T-34. And we also have the Sherman Flyer Firefly, which is the tank destroyer. Our teammate put some recon out here, so it's good to take a look at what they might have or don't have. This is OKW's tier 4 base, so they do... Looks like they might be trying to tech up to tank soon. But they have no tanks on the field so far. I think Cromwell might be the right choice. They have that one Raketan. You have a blob of infantry. The Cromwell can crush. I've had luck with that. I'm gonna go ahead and probe their right flank. Let's see if they set up any defenses. All right, I'm gonna go with the Cromwell. Here's another interesting part of the British teching. You'll notice you click on your tier, I guess you call this tier three. I think I called it tier four, but their tabs are a little bit different, the Brits. Throws me off. You have the option of going two different half tiers. You have this hammer tactics, which gives you access to a Comet tank, which I would call a heavy tank. Very effective against a heavier armor, and it itself has a lot of armor. Gives you access to a Gammon bomb for your infantry section. Um, emergency war speed and track vehicle two two abilities that I actually do not have a lot of experience with or you can go anvil and you get access to the Churchill tank which is obviously but effective against infantry as it says in its name um, heavy engineers that'll increase your repair speed airburst shells which are included into your base artillery barrage so that's an interesting um you know this is easy to forget about when you get late into a game Getting access to one of those two heavy tanks uh, could be very effective. That's well, worth keeping in mind. Let's get this machine gun in the fight. Put up another layer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tech grenades. I, this is important to have. So they did, they put mines. That's smart of them. They got mines on their back, and they have a machine gun here. I'm gonna go ahead and send another infantry to try to get a flank. Let's see if our mortar pick can reach. We can. He's trying to get in this building, so check this out. My mortar pit can reach all the way over here. I'm gonna drop a smoke just to show you how that would work. Got our Cromwell ready. As you can see in our top right list of units, I'm gonna just select him, bring him over. So here's that smoke coming in from our mortar pit. Very long range. Now we can actually cap under the cover of that smoke and that machine gun won't be able to take fire on us. The grenade's just finished. We'll go ahead and lob a grenade. In that building for good measure, and we ended up hitting a mine. Very happy with the mines. I should go ahead and get mine sweepers, and I should probably pick a commander. Better to clear out mines with infantry than it is with your tanks. They're winning that fight. They got the cover. All right, they're a little bit more stubborn back here. I'm gonna back off. Don't want to get snared. Let's see here, a land mattress could be good. Artillery could be good. Sometimes it can be hard to choose. 
We have so much munitions. I'm gonna put a second Bren on all of these infantry sections. Just makes them extra deadly. I may as well put my munitions to use. So. We'll go ahead and upgrade one of these guys with the coordinated... Uh, the pyrotechnics. So we can start using this base artillery from the Brits. Alright, we got an Astwin. I'm gonna go ahead and send my Cromwell to help with that. Cromwell does have a smoke shell. You can also upgrade it with the tank commander. Should give him more sight. Increases visibility. For, uh, ultra 25 munitions. Smoke shell's a good way to just block sight on some AT guns or maybe give another unit a way to escape. It's a nice supporting ability. Demonstrate AVRE usage. It's a chat request. The AVRE is similar to the Sturm Tiger. It's like a smaller version of the Sturm Tiger, which we encountered in our first Soviet game. I described it as dropping a tactical nuke. It takes one big devastating shot, very effective against groups of infantry or static support weapons. There's a free Panzer Shrek on the ground. You want to go ahead and grab that. Don't want to let them have it, but mainly. I think we might be dealing with some newer players that seem to be you know, pretty pushed back. Um, let's see. Let me double check. All right. Well, let's go and we'll go with Royal Engineer. I think that's a good commander to start with. So we have Designate Command Vehicle, which will improve nearby units and increase the recharge rate of commander abilities. So something we can go ahead and slap onto our Cromwell. You notice the benefits that it gives to our infantry based on those uh, new yellow circles above their heads because they're nearby. So this infantry section with the two dots is the one that we upgraded with our pyrotechnics. Let's go ahead and give you a demonstration of that. Get up as close as we can. Let's go ahead and drop it right here at the entrance to their base. This is going to throw a little grenade. Red smoke. Now our base artillery is going to start firing in that vicinity. It can be very annoying to deal with as an Axis player. See their big hits. Definitely don't want to have your infantry in that area. Alright, this commander also has a, um, access to a flame mortar support, which is equivalent to the uh, Soviet incendiary artillery. It'll drop about three rounds of flaming napalm. We'll go ahead and demonstrate it on this tier 4 building here. Not the best use of it. Won't do a ton of damage, but it'll at least demonstrate what it does. I can go ahead and fire a smoke here as well, block its vision. To show you how the Cromwell smoke... Oh wow, I'm actually taking a lot of damage. We had a P4 on the field. Okay, I need to be careful. Almost just threw my Cromwell. Go ahead and get the engineers up here. This commander also has vehicle crew repairs. Which is, um... Very clutch. Get your tanks back in action quickly. Go ahead and press that. 40 munitions. It's gonna drop some plumes of smoke. The only downside is I'm not able to move this tank until the repairs are completely done. So you want to make sure you're somewhere safe. Oh, I'm moving up my AT gun here. This is a little dangerous, but um, let's get this in max range. We'll attack ground. Try to get this tier 4 destroyed. If you attack ground, you can shoot max range. It's just less accurate. But you see, it looks like that shot hit. Let me get my infantry up here. This is already repaired. Very quick. All right, we have tons of resource. Let's just go ahead and take up one of these sub-tiers. Let's take a look at the uh, Churchill infantry tank. We'll go ahead and take up to the anvil. Looks like we took out that tier 4, so our enemy is going to be hurting. When they lose that tier 4, they have to build an entirely other one and respend their fuel upgrading it, so... It's a pretty devastating loss. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Most British thing I could be doing in this game. Okay. 
Um, well, since we're here, we have some time, enemies on the ropes. Let's go ahead and build a another emplacement. I'll show you the 17-pounder. We have two Soviet ML-20s here. Let's just go ahead and put an anti-tank. You know, we're just going to go ahead and create what we call in this game a Sim City. Which is, um... Which is the meme of the Brits. They call it Sim City, which is just creating tons of emplacements in the map. The infantry sections, unfortunately, do not have snares, but the engineers do. The British engineers have this heat grenade. Unfortunately, all of our, uh, our only engineer available is back there building at some point now. So we'll just have to fight this tank the old-fashioned way. With some guts. These are PTRS rifles on the guards, which are able to cause some damage to armored vehicles. That would be usually pretty minor. The guards can block vision, though. There's an ability on these guards' troops from the Soviets that'll allow them to blind the vision of the enemy tanks. So they won't be able to fire back. Alright, 17 pounders up. You can see it's got a long um, a, a range of fire. And if a tank gets in this radius, it's just going to be a devastating shot. Um, in one of the games that we played, we were able to kill a full health King Tiger with three shots from this 17 pounder. Now, we have 90 pop caps, so we can't actually build too many more units. I'm going to go ahead and drop an incendiary here, because now he's going to have to decide if he's going to go backwards or forward. That's something that your airdrop abilities, you know, it's going to force a movement. And now this is also in his retreat path, you'll know. So if I push here and I get him to retreat, he's going to be running through those flames doing even more damage. I'm going to throw a grenade on his front. Throw two grenades on his front to get that out of there. He threw a grenade. You can see my mortars are coming in automatically. Oh my gosh, look at this. That's devastating. Now he's retreating through the flames. Lydacor, thank you for the nine months in a row. Holy smokes, comrade, you are an epic individual. Thank you, sir. So this is worth mentioning, guys. The mortar pit, um, it will fire on targets automatically, but the range is shorter than if you were to do it manually. If you click the barrage ability, you're able to fire all the way to this line. The automatic fire of the mortars is going to be going to that first red line. What is that white circle there? Oops. Excuse me, that's a gun. Oh, he's um, just outside of range of our 17-pounder. I'm going to right-click, and that will line up this straight line on that new right-click spot. And the, it's actually a pretty fast setup. I thought it was slower than that. Oh, he's coming into range. We'll see what... There's a 17-pounder hit. That thing is gone. That first shot was from our 6-pounder. But now they have been introduced. Look at this guy's almost in range. My stolen Panzer Shrek shared him off. Alright, let's get these troops healed up. We can't... We don't have enough population cap for the Churchill. It costs 19, we only have 11. But we could consider throwing something away, potentially. I don't know if we need all these machine guns. This heroic T-70 is trying to go give us maybe some vision. It's Vet 3. T-70s can be put in a recon state where they won't fire, but their vision will be increased. Many pros will use T-70s that way in the late game just to give their extra vision to um, supporting units. The Germans do have an equivalent to the 17 pounder. It's called the Pac-43, but it is a commander-only emplacement. All right, they're gonna forfeit there. That was a short game. I think we do a second one, um, and maybe we'll demonstrate the armor car. Wasn't there the whole stream, but I think it's useful to tell new people how to counter the Brits the best. Um, it depends on their playstyle. If the Brits are going heavy in placements, then getting uh, saving up for a lot of armored vehicles and or hammering their emplacements with artillery is a surefire way to knock them out. In other words, Panthers. 
Panthers and LEFHs will frustrate the British. The British um, anti-tank destroyers are not that great. The Sherman Firefly can be upgraded for munitions uh, to get these, they're called tulips, and they fire rockets that can snare a tank for a short amount of time. Hey, Langalameem, thank you for your first tier one sub, man. Good to have you here. So like, as I was saying, the Sherman Fireflies have these tulips they can stun, but the Fireflies are just not very well armored. So a couple of big shots, like two or three shots, they could be out. Um, so in big games, they're a little dangerous to play with. Um, and I haven't spent a lot of time with the Comet, so I don't know how... I know it's heavily armored, I still don't think it's that effective in terms of armor penetration, and I think the Axis tanks just have an advantage late game. So I definitely recommend taking advantage of that as, as the Axis player. Should I aim to replace my basic infantry with Doctrine units throughout the game? That depends on the situation. Um, and it depends on what your Doctrine infantry are. For instance, uh, one of our commanders had Commandos. Now, would I want Commandos on a big open map instead of infantry sections with Brens? Nib, thank you for the Prime Sub, man. Welcome. Just another Tuesday. Oh, we played this map in the Wehrmacht tutorial. Uh-oh. Got two guys in a clan. Alright, so I was, um, the question was, should you replace your baseline infantry with your commander's infantry as the game goes on? And I think that depends on what your infantry is. Because uh, the infantry sections with the brands are just very effective long range. And for instance, one of your um, commander's infantry might be close quarters troops. And you might not want that late game. So it's not an instant thing to do. Um, but you also want to factor in time to build and the veterancy. So if you just need to get troops on the field as fast as you can and you have a lot of resource, then doing using the call-in could be the better choice. Hey, Duck. All right, guys. Game two with the Brits. We're going to make some different choices, try to show off the different abilities we I think we covered the emplacements so we'll go ahead and try to just avoid that unless we unless we think we really need them and they're gonna come in handy give a taste of the armored car maybe we'll put our forward assembly a little bit more aggressive and I'm gonna go ahead and start with an MG this time because we have our fuel in this corner and um, odds are the enemy will probe it and see what we got over there. So an MG would be nice to just keep them away. Play Commando. Bus Robot says Commandos are generally best as ambushers. Have them cloak near a point, then catch a unit when it tries to cap. You know, that's something we haven't covered yet. So that's a good um, segue into the fact some units have a cloaking ability. Now when you have the unit, you'll notice there's like three guys that um, are fading. And that means they're not visible to the enemy. So you can actually hide the units, wait till enemies gets close and surprise them. The OKW AT gun, which is called the Raketan, has that ability at Veteran C1. So it's something you want to be mindful of. And certain uh, elite troops like the British Commandos, which are on this commander here, that 3 CP ability. Um, one thing we didn't cover yet is the British can build sandbags and trenches, which you know give green cover to your troops anywhere that you want. Enemies can get inside of your trenches and use the green cover for themselves. So you want to be careful not to do that. So what I'm going to do tactically is just try to secure this fuel up here. I don't want to spend too much time, but I want to create a basic defense. And then maybe help my team put pressure on the middle VP. But again, that can all change as soon as we encounter the enemy. Looks like they're doing the same. They want to go secure their bottom left fuel. And they're probing some troops into the middle. We have a heavy presence of infantry. It's good by my US teammates. Alright, got 
Got a machine gun. I might consider getting even a second machine gun just to cover the VP. But now you know what? We'll just save up for our command post. 180, 30 fuel. Got enough now. See if we can get an armored car in the field quickly. They're finally coming to probe our side. Clip says you want your NGs scouting for your MGs early and mid game repairing with mines. That is very true. Um, your engineers can always be doing something. Typically, want to keep an eye on them, make sure they're not static. I mean, you could be laying barbed wire on cover, planting mines. You can help repair other teammates' vehicles or emplacements. Even these bunkers, you see, it has low health. You can have your engineers helping to repair that. Lots of things they can be doing. All right, well now they've given us this ground here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take armored car. Message received and understood. Even though this map would probably favor better from a Bofors, like putting a Bofors back here so deep and covering our fuel would be a pretty clutch late game play, but you know, this is a tutorial. We wanna show you the different aspects of the Brits. So we're gonna go armored car, even if it means not making the best decision to win. That's how much I love you guys, okay? Winning isn't everything. Knowledge is power. Armored cars can now be built. Armored car costs 280 and 60 fuel, so we almost have enough. So we'll just try not to build anything until we can get access. Now the enemy's given us, you know, rain, uncontested rain over this. Oh, now he's realized his mistake. Because um, by, you know, one thing we didn't talk about is these, these points also give us fuel and munitions. Um, it's not exclusive to the munitions and the fuel points. Every point that you capture does increase your resource production. And you can see your re resource production on um, the plus sign next to the given resource. Notice our manpower is plus 263, munitions plus 57. Not that it'll mean much to you as a new player, but it just kind of gives you an indicator of how well, how much resource you can expect. And that's per minute, by the way. Okay, there's some flame. Let's go ahead and get out of there. Looks like um, armor car ready to go. We'll go ahead and build that. Again, I should be keeping my Brits, my infantry behind uh, cover. Increases their attack. Not as useful for me to be running around in the open. He wants to get close because he has a flamethrower. More effective close quarters. Okay, now they're starting to want to put pressure. They don't like me being up here, which is understandable. You know what, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna move up my MG here. Try to walk my own talk about moving my front line forward. Odds are he's gonna wanna fire. Oh, we got a scout car. Our armored cars will be able to tear that thing up. The armored car has an actual turret. The scout car is more of a light gun. This is a 75 millimeter gun on the armored car. It does have a machine gun. All right, now I need to think about medical supplies. This time I'll go ahead and do medical supplies on the troops. Since this map is wider, it's a little bit bigger. See the benefit to uh, healing on the move. All right. Don't want to charge in. Now we got our medics, we can press H. You'll notice anybody, any infantry in range of that squad will be healed. So you can get all your guys together. They'll just, and they can heal on the move, which is nice. I'm just going to reforce that guy. Um, and I'm going to wait to attack all at once. Don't want to send in my light vehicle alone. That will put him high risk of being snared and potentially destroyed. Um, the British Sniper is arguably the best, the best sniper in the game. At VET 1, it can damage light vehicles' engines. It might even be able to damage heavier vehicles if they're at low enough health. That's something I have not tested. Um, but like I've recommended with others, as a new player, I wouldn't recommend going with the Sniper, just because it's an, exp an expensive mistake to make if you lose it. 
Alright, infantry's almost there. Got our MG covering that right flank. We're floating a lot of resource, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab an engineer. I think we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, prematurely tech up to our tier 3. I think this is gonna be a game of armor. It's my gut's telling me. Yeah, we got an intro blob moving up here. Oh, I just charged right at- this was a very new mistake. My armored car showed me that was there, and I still ran my infantry into it, so... Don't be like me. The other thing I'm gonna do... Actually, forget that tier 3 upgrade. I'm gonna start doing, uh... Infantry squads will soon have additional manpower. Upgrades to the infantry sections. You notice the uh, armored car has this smoke screen. You just press E and it'll, uh... Much like the Panzer ta Tactician... Ability, um, the Wehrmacht that we were using. It'll just put out a plume of smoke, block visibility of other enemy units. I'm just gonna annoy this MG, try to push it back. I think I should also upgrade to the Pyrotechnics. I think this is gonna be a good map to use our artillery on. Um, the Concentration Barrage on this Royal Artillery Commander is actually the same ability as the Pyrotechnics upgrade, except you're able to fire at enemy without needing, you know, to be in range with your infantry to throw this grenade. It costs more, but you are able to use your artillery anywhere, anytime that you can afford it, essentially. Oh, there's a Raketon. I'm gonna go ahead and plo drop our smoke so we can't get a second shot off on them. Oh, he fired through the smoke? Very good, very good play. You tell that player knows what he's doing. So he attacked ground to shoot me at maximum range, even though he didn't have vision. Be like that guy. Attack ground. Alright. Now he's, he was getting a little more forward. We might be able to get off a... No, let me go ahead and shoot at these guys first. They're more risk to me. Let's grab some brands. I got those brand upgrades going. I got plenty of munitions. Oh, I gotta get out of here! You look away for a second. Might have got hit by a grenade or a mortar. Okay. Ready for orders. You do have the target tread on this as well, which can get up close and personal. Try to slow down an enemy vehicle. Kaibo asks, can you have barrage and base arty at the same time? No, because it uses the same base artillery, so you can only do one at a time and the cooldown will be shared. I believe. Actually, no, I don't think the cooldown is shared. That's... I think you would be able to use the concentration barrage and, shortly after, throw the artillery f uh, grenade from the infantry, and I think it would do one right after the other. But that's something I actually have not tried before. Okay, we got that mid-VP. I think I need to get an AT gun. Guys, we're 10 minutes into the game. And I don't have AT, it's, it's a big mistake. I've gotten caught up in these fights, easy thing to do. You know what, speaking of which, I'm gonna go ahead and plant a mine as well. On these advanced positions. Except now I'm getting suppressed. We're gonna... We're gonna share the fun of suppression with that guy. He wants nothing to do with it. Alright, let's go try to get a grenade. Or a mine down here. Six pounder anti-tank gun finished. Another, uh... Good strategy could be to put your AT gun just in range of a mine, so that when a vehicle does hit it, you have an AT gun there to follow up another shot. It could be good. Team is getting very aggressive, pushing their support weapons. That's a good play. Now that machine gun's pointed the opposite way. Could take advantage of that, but we do know there's a machine gun in this building as well. Alright, I think we also need to take up to our tier 4. I'm gonna go ahead and take up two grenades. Grenades are good at pushing out MGs. Okay, and we got that rack again. Drop my smoke. Again, he fired to the ground. He missed this time. Oh, there's that scout car. He hasn't really been using that. Uh-oh, you hear that sound. That's the sound of a Stuka rocket truck from the OKW. Thing is absolutely monstrous. Off to 
absolutely monstrous. The company command post is finished and ready for use. Slowing down and stopping. Try to give our armored car some range so we can get some hits on this. Alright, that MG has moved. But we do have Shreks there, so we don't want to let our armored car get in range of that. Okay, this was not very smart play, guys. I didn't think that through. So I'm just gonna get out of there. I need to regroup. I ran my troops up to a squad that's better close quarters fighters, and the infantry sections were out of cover, so they didn't have their bonus. All around, not good. Not a good choice for me. Okay, I think we'll go and take a look at the uh, the centaur. Why not? I'll show you what the centaur can do. Go ahead and get this repaired up here. Bus Robot says you can't throw the smoke nade at the same time as Concentration Barrage. But, but once it's over, you can't throw the smoke nade just after. Okay. Confirmed. You can do one after the other. The Centaur is, as I mentioned before, does anti-air. can shoot down planes. It also can cause suppression and just shred infantry. But it is a little bit of a weaker unit. So you want to keep an eye on it. Won't, it won't be able to take too many hits from armor. Or AT guns. Okay. Um, with that being said though, you know, we're getting later in the game and I still only have one AT gun. So since I'm getting a Centaur, which is more of an anti-infantry tank, I think I need to double down and grab another AT gun. I think this map would benefit from a land masher. So it's a lot of close quarters, a lot of choke points. Oh no, here comes the Stuka. Oh, thankfully it went this way. The Stuka fires in a straight line. It's row of rockets. This is a very dangerous play by the USF players. Enemy's doing some probing up here. Okay, got our second AT gun. We'll go ahead and put it in our back line. I'm gonna heal up my infantry on the field. Um, so this is an interesting dilemma for the Brits because they only have the static mortar pit. They don't have a mobile mortar. It's an interesting, um, issue for them. Let's see, he's starting to mortar my machine gun, so I'm gonna want to move that out of the way. Because we have these machine guns to deal with, and, um, we're a little bit limited. We have to get creative. We could set up a mortar pit, but I don't think I want to lock down 350 manpower into a static mortar pit. Um... At least not yet. I can go ahead and try to get this... You know, barrage. Oh, but I'm not gonna be able to get close enough. That wasn't a good play. I didn't support him. I should have moved up with my vehicles there. Oh, we got the Panzer Strikes coming up. I need to get out of there. And this guy, these guys are using supporting, you know, they got their anti-tank, they got a, and a mortar here. Very, it's a very stubborn defense. Well played. And I didn't really coordinate my attack very well, so I deserve to lose that fight. I think I might actually need a mortar pit. I mean, that's, um... That's a pretty stubborn defense. I think it would benefit us. I can also go for this land mattress. Uh-oh. That's a Panzerwerfer. Alright, he was trying to hammer our in infantry and catch him off guard. Thankfully, we moved. So that's the Wehrmacht's rocket truck. Alright, um... We could also go the Royal Artillery. It'll give us that Sexton. It'll give us the Concentration Barrage. I think I'm gonna do that one because I actually do recommend this for new players. Let's go ahead and do it, guys. We'll go Royal Artillery. I can see people in chat were agreeing. Um, we have so much munitions. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more Brens. 500 munitions, it's a lot. We do have two weapon slots on these infantry sections. Let's take advantage. This commander also has early warning flares. Now this is very useful, guys. As you've probably learned by now, the fog of war is a big part of this game. Stuff is hidden behind the gray. The early warning flares, so go ahead and pop them off. It'll give us vision, extended vision, into the front line. 
be some artillery flares that'll be floating in the air. The enemy cannot counter them. They can't shoot them down. Got the USF Calliope. Shooting some rockets. Oh, he hit my mine there. Can see we, I see that because of these flares gave us vision over here. Very useful ability. And I actually do think we would benefit from a mortar pickaxe. I really do. Let's see if I'm in range. This would be maybe too aggressive. Maybe if we put it over here. I, don't, I actually don't know if that'll be in range, but it could give us some smoke. Oh yeah, we should be in range. That first line, I believe, is the automatic fire line. Our smoke will definitely be able to cover that. Go ahead and give it a shot. So we can hear the repairs. You hear that sound? That means they're repairing that vehicle. Oh goodness. Got the strikes coming. You can see those strikes just do absolute damage. This unit's low health. We're going to focus fire. And I'm going to back up. Let's repair this. Always want to be where we know they have those rocket trucks. So if you hear that sound, you want to be careful of that. All right, mortar pits up. Let's see. Yeah, we can reach this house with our manual barrage. Start hammering it. We also have access to our concentration barrage. Costs 100 munitions. Okay, so I didn't remember this, but we do need to have vision. Oh, we just got vision. You know what? I'm going to drop it. Our mortar hit gave us vision enough, so I was able to drop it. Now that we have that going, it's a good time for us to push. You know, we have artillery down. Why not get aggressive? Move up the AT gun. Alright, we just got snared. Let's get him back. Let's get the infantry up. I'm gonna go ahead and unleash our flares again just to give us extra vision, because we're in an attack mode, guys, so... Any extra vision that we get could mean the difference between killing the enemy units. May as well pop the flares. Oh, well, you can see that artillery just absolutely de demolished the house. Let's bring up these AT guns. Oh, they have an AT gun themselves. Let's reverse out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and target it so that I can potentially move my vehicles up. I move my AT gun up as well, so we're taking fire on that scout car. Oh, they have an awesome one that just got wrecked. Alright, our ability is three seconds away. I don't know, he's not gonna survive. I gotta get him out of there. Almost could have thrown. I do have access to the concentration bars again. That's a fast recharge. Um. Let me go ahead and get another engineer. See, we don't have smoke. We don't have smoke repairs on this commander, so can't benefit from that. We're gonna have to go ahead and get some more engineers. Potentially speed up our repairs. I think we should go ahead and probably get a, a tank destroyer. They might start busting out with Panthers. You want to be prepared for that. Let's get this guy a little bit somewhere safe. <laughs> you are talking smart, but you play dot dot dot. Yes. I'm not the best player in the game. Confirmed. I do call myself the King Noob, comrades. For a reason. I've also been realizing how hard it is to play and talk at the same time. Heavy engine repair speed is nuts. Yeah, so if we did upgrade to the, uh... To the anvil, we get that heavy engineer upgrade. Okay. USF Calliope just raining down on this blob in the middle. We try to move Centaur a little bit in range. Can also help with our mortar pit. Look how far our smoke will go. We go ahead and drop these flares again. They only cost 60 muni. We have plenty of munitions. Our firefly is out. The this is the British tank destroyer. These are the tulips I was talking about. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade those. Maybe we'll get a demonstration. Oh, I just took some rockets. Infantry just took some rockets to the face. Sorry about that, comrade. Alright, the flares are down, giving us some vision. Enemy has a fuel cache up over there. You know what? 
I wish I could see this. I would drop artillery on it if I could. Maybe just, let's drop some smoke here. Maybe we can just get some pressure on him. Thanks, Cuban. <laughs> All right, let's see, what is this? MG42, that could be worth taking. Maybe should be moving this stuff up as well. Oh, nope, he's coming. You know, let's just leave him there. All right, look at this. I'm gonna drop artillery on that base from our howitzers. Look at all this stuff back here. All right, let's bring out the firefly. We got a puma. Yeah, he's he's not gonna make it out of there. The firefly gave him the old snipe. All right, these units are low health. Let's get them out of there. Oh, we got the shreks coming. Look at that, guys. That is the power of Shrek. Double Shreks. And that's also a demonstration of the weakness of the armor on the Firefly. Two squads of Shreks were able to take it out before I could even react. Um, yeah, so you gotta be very careful. I didn't have, uh, you know, this was a, a Fog of War area. I didn't have sight on it. That would count as me having my tank too far advanced, too exposed. You want to avoid that. You want to try to keep vision around your tanks, especially if they're weaker on the armor side. All I need is a sexton, we say. Yeah, let's get a sexton out there. Sexton, uh, this thing will just lob shells. Just absolutely hammer enemy positions. We got our base howitzers as well, may as well hit this LEFH. This is the German artillery. Well, we've got the we've got the enemy really pushed back here. Oh, they do have a panther out. I should probably get another firefly. I'm only a few fuel away. Base Artie's firing. Got our sexton firing. Uh, so perimeter Overwatch will. This will um, put an artillery barrage on any units moving into your friendly sector. So if you notice a big push coming, this is a good thing you can drop. And you'll see how our, our front lines all light up orange. So now any units that move in, including these, moving into friendly sectors, are going to start getting artillery fire. Let's go ahead and pop the smoke. Okay, they're just getting lit up there. Let's see. Let's see if our uh, centaur can take on this AT gun. Oh, I'm population capped out, so I can't get another tank. Um, this thing, the uh, sexton, does need to be fired manually, like most units. It's not going to auto fire. So once the cooldown is complete, you're going to want to try to remember to go set that to firing again. 